Thanks for listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast brought to you by DraftKings. Great deal going on. You put in five bucks, you get $150 in free plays, NBA finals, but you got to be a new customer. doesn't even matter who wins. All right. Now joined by William Brad Alice. We're going to see how long this works, but Brad is in Minnesota right now. Hello, Brad. Hey, I'm coming to you from the land of Scott Schlitterhart, I believe is how you pronounce it. And I'm on a lake in the middle of rural uh, Minnesota. So we'll see how this works. All right, well, we're, so let's get down to it. Arizona basketball, you've added Courtney Ramey. You've added, um, uh, excuse me, Cedric Henderson. You're probably looking at this as the lineup that you're going to be rolling with going forward. Um, these are nice little pickups, Brad, mainly because they add a little bit of spice and athleticism to the perimeter. Yeah, you know, you're looking at it. You've now kind of replaced the guys you've lost. Uh, you know, you look at uh, Ramey, maybe an upgrade to, to Justin Kyer. Uh, Henderson is probably a little bit of a step down from uh, Dallin Terry, but he replaces him. Yeah, obviously, Adama Ball now becomes the replacement for Matherin. Um, you know, Vester becomes the replacement for Coloco, very different players. But now you've got a complete lineup. You know, you don't have any big holes. You've got some veteran leadership in Ramey and Henderson to go along uh, with the returning players. So Arizona's got a complete lineup there, and, uh, you know, looks looks pretty good. Uh, Courtney Ramey to me was a fascinating one because he was one of the better defenders in the Big 12. Um, he averaged about 12 points, shot about 80, per, or excuse me, 40% from three his junior season at uh, Texas. I like that pickup, and I think he adds, I think he's the one that he for sure starts, and I think you're probably looking at a guy playing 25, 26 minutes a game, Brad. Yeah, if he doesn't start, then he comes off the bench. He gives you a score defender off the bench, but I could very much see him being – uh, a score and again a compliment to Kirk Kreisa as another ball handler on the floor, uh, which you need because you know as we know Kreisa is more of a combo guard than a pure point guard. Ramey as well. So now once again under, uh, under Lloyd, you got two or three combo guards. I like that. Brad, we're starting to lose. Yeah, figured that one might happen. Uh, yeah and i apologize we lost brad so it's 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 okay we lost brad i figured that that might happen brad is out on the lake brad is the man so don't uh again don't worry don't worry about that we can uh let's try to add him again in here real quick let's see let's see how you're doing brad let's see what you're up to i'm here i'm not trying to shield from the wind we'll see if it works okay that was good that all right now that's good all right, but I like the athleticism quotient, though, now, in that I think Ramey is exactly what you need on the other side of Kirk Risa. You need a guy who is going to be able to pick up the other team's point guard who might be deciding to go at you from time to time. So, again, it's not like you're adding an All-American, but you're adding a piece that they really needed. Yeah, when you combine those two along with Pella Larson, you now have three ball handlers, three guys who can defend – a variety of guards. Uh, it just gives you that versatility that you had last year with Kyer Larson and, and Kreisa. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a good matchup. It's a good mix of players. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think Ramey's a little taller than mm -hmm. Kyer was. Doesn't quite have the bulk, um, although he's pretty close. He's a big grown, you know, grown man. Was he 22, 23 years old? So, again, right. it gives just Arizona a lot of versatility, a lot of different lineups they can throw at you. You know, if, if you're going against a guard-heavy lineup, you slide Pella to the to the three for some lineups, and you have those three guards all out there at the same time. If you need to go, sm you know, smaller, um, then, you know, you can maybe pull Kyer or, or Kreisa out and go with Ramey at the point. So, yeah, again, a lot of versatility, a lot of puzzle pieces uh, for Tommy Lloyd either to try to match lineups 
or to try to make other teams uncomfortable with what he can do with his lineup. Cedric Henderson is fascinating to me because I actually, well, I'm, I'm going to be honest with people. I've watched one game of Cedric Henderson, and that was it uh, when Campbell played Duke this year. But he looked every bit the part of somebody that belonged on the court out there. He's six foot six, two hundred and ten pounds. Play his pops played in the NBA, put up fifteen points, five rebounds per game, and. I think at this stage in the game, especially if you're worried about fit, this is a nice little piece there, Brad. Yeah, you know, what I like about him as well is he's played his best games against the bigger teams. Now, they didn't play a ton of big teams, but against the Marshals of the world, against the Winthrops of the world, who are, you know, legit tournament-type teams, he's had his best games. What was he, 18, as you mentioned, 18 and 11 against Duke. Right. Um, now, he's had some absolutely poor shooting nights where he's gone over and scored four points. Now, having not seen those Campbell teams, I don't know if they were didn't worry about it and just let him, you know, take three shots and call it a day and win the game, or if it was something where he was, you know, had to be set down for a while. So that's obviously a concern. But if he really is going to be your wing off the bench, assuming balls, your 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 three, then I don't mind that. Cause, you know, we saw that with Kyer last year. We saw that right. Occasion with Larson, where you can survive a bad game from those guys. What you can't do is survive consistent bad games from your starters. So if he ends up being a starter, then yeah, he has to be more consistent. But if he is the sixth or seventh man, then you don't worry about it as much. Yeah, I, I think with Pella Larson, too, um, he's an interesting guy because I, I think a guy made a really interesting point about Pella in that he said, I think Pella starts, he said, but if Pella doesn't start, that's actually a good thing for Arizona because that means that Henderson is probably really, really, really good because you already know the caliber of player you have in Pella. Yeah, and you know, I think the thing we have to also consider about Pella is he missed most of the preseason. So how good can he be right. with a full offseason where he's trying to find a school, a full preseason uh, in the system, a full preseason of uh, strength and conditioning, and then, yeah, whatever his role is going to be. And I think he also appears to be a guy, if he's off the bench, he's fine. If he's starting, he's fine. And I think there's a lot of questions. I think there's only maybe two or three sure starters in this group. Um, right. So I don't know. Is Larson going to start? Is Henderson going to start? Is Ball going to start? Is or is it going to be Ramey going to start? I don't know, and that's kind of the fun part about this team. And it may be something where you get different starters every game, although Lloyd seemed to like the consistency in one starting lineup. But it could be a game where, you know, one week uh, Larson's uh, playing 18, the next he's playing 38. And I think what we're finding out, too, about Tommy Lloyd, a lot of people are wondering, why in the world isn't he, uh, you know, why didn't he get more dynamic players in the portal? I think what you're finding with him is that, and especially this was the case at Gonzaga, that tra that roster fit is beyond important to him right there. I think that, you know, I, I don't, he's not looking to bring in Kobe Simmons or Raleigh Alkins types just because they're talented. I think that he would far, he'd like to take a loss, he would take a loss before he would set the program back in his regard in that, in that regard. Well, the thing, here's the thing. You're not going to find Ben Matherin in the transfer portal. Right. You're probably not going to find Dallin Terry in the, in the transfer portal. So what you're counting on is you're counting on your staff who prides themselves on player development, uh, making Kirk Kreese better, making Tabellus better, making Balo better, making Larson better, and then adding pieces who are similar to the guys you lost. Again, I think you can get 90% of Dallin Terry out of Henderson. I think you can get maybe 110% of Justin Kyer out of, uh, out of uh, Ramey. Uh, but what you can't do is replace Ben and Big Matherin, and even if you had someone that talented, what is it going to do to your team chemistry? Because we have saw last year, team chemistry is vitally important. Right. And that's what you're, and that's what he's going for too. And you, you got to remember too, that I, I might be jumping ahead here a little bit, Brad, but 2022, 2023 to me is really, or excuse me, 23, 24 is probably the real arrival date then for everybody, because almost everybody on this team next year could come back. And then you're also bringing in a Kylan Broswell. You're bringing in a KJ Lewis. So you've got other players that you can bring in to probably have his most talented top to bottom team. I think this year he wants to be good, competitive for sure, but he doesn't want to do anything that can rock the boat for that following season. No, there's a long-term plan here. And I think last year was a little bit probably of a surprise. I think, uh, I don't think anyone anticipated them being a one seed and being as good as they were. 
But really, yeah, they are building for year three. And I think, again, Sean Miller did the same thing. And you can see what that team was in year three. Um, but Or year four, I should say. But, yeah, right. when you got the two freshmen and you may be adding another piece or two as they got a lot of other elite freshmen coming in on top of the guys who could be back as, as seniors or super seniors. This year, you have to, you just are trying to be good. And, again, if you duplicate a lot of last year's success, great. Because I don't see them being, with the exception of Matherin, significantly different than last year. And if Tabellas can make a leap, uh, then you, you may be a team that can be a top three or four seed. I don't know. Um, but we didn't know that last year either. But, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. You're not going to bring in, you know, who's the kid who just left high school and is on second or third commitment? You don't need that kind of drama just to fill in. As good as a player he is, you don't need that kind of drama to fill in your roster. You you know, yeah, you'd probably rather be a four seed and, and, and take, you know, losing the Sweet 16 than maybe be a – final four team but maybe miss the tournament because you have all kinds of chemistry and roster issues right and here's the deal one thing that doesn't have any chemistry or roster issues is the DraftKings sportsbook app code word phnx you put in five bucks you get 150 dollars in free plays you got to be a new customer 21 and up arizona only gambling problem call 1-800 next step i like the golden state warriors to win the finals they're up three to two right now william i think you picked the warriors as well correct yeah, and I'm not jumping off that bandwagon. I know the Celtics have done some good things early, but yeah. the Warriors seem to be finding their stride. You know, Draymond's playing a little bit better. Wiggins is reviving his career. And at the end of the day, you got Steph, and Steph is better than Tatum. So give me, give me, yeah, give me the uh give me the Warriors all day long. DraftKings Sportsbook app, code word PHNX. All right, well now let's talk the Arizona front court here, Brad. Are you cool with and I think at this stage in the game, we know what it's going to be. It's going to be Azulis Tabellis, Umar Ballo, and Henry Visar. Are you cool? Are you cool with that? Would you like them to add some more depth? Where would you go? You know, unless you know you're getting a piece that absolutely comes in and doesn't rock the boat and fits, I'm fine with it because if you look at it, you replace Coloco with Visar. And they're not the same player at all, but Visar's really talented. And then in essence, you replace Kim Aiken, who you didn't have at all last year with Dylan Anderson and, and possibly even uh, Big Phil. Um, although Phil's a, a wing, he's a 6'9 wing. Right. So if he has to play two or three minutes uh, against Washington State at the four, you're going to survive that. So they're actually right. deeper than they were last year at the at the post. They just may not be quite as talented, certainly on the defensive end. But you might, if Visser's as good as we think he might be, you might be better offensively. As good as Coloco was, he wasn't versatile offensively. And Visser might be that guy. So, yeah, I'm fine with it. Now, if you can go find uh, an older guy who can come in and be a shot blocker and be a rebounder and, and take some presser, pressure off Visser from having to log 20, 25 a game as a freshman, then I'm fine with that. But a lot of teams would kill for this front line. And, again, I'm assuming Tubelis is going to be better, uh, more consistent. I assume Balo is going to be better. What's your – well, let's talk Balo for a second. What are your expectations for Balo? Because – if Ballo to me is starting and he's playing 25 minutes a game, I'd like to see Ballo in that 11.7 rebound couple or couple block type category. If he's playing that many minutes and he's in the shape to be able to handle that, William. Yeah, you know, and I'd even sacrifice a few of those points for a few more rebounds and maybe a half a block a game. I don't need if I can get Umar Ballo that I saw down the stretch in the Pac-12, I'm fine. And that was at times. A guy no one could match up with. A right. guy who could could get you some good garbage points and get a couple in rhythm points. A guy who got grabbed big rebounds. A guy who could send a shot into the third row. And what Balo does is Balo in some ways reminds me of Zeus. If Zeus could block shots. Because he right. eats up so much space, it's hard to get in the lane with him. Right. And you throw him into Bellas, who's a big boy as well. Or even Viser, who's not... You know, yeah, he's not a bulky guy, but he's tall. And you're going to have trouble operating in the paint with those guys. Because, you know, if you look at the rest of the Pac-12, most teams are running out there a 6'7 power forward who, who's not much bigger than Dallin Terry was. And now you're throwing some bulk, some size, some athleticism at teams in the front uh, court. And, yeah, that could be a different matchup for a lot of teams. All right, Brad, before we let you sign off here, I just wanted to get your take real quick. We'll let you get back to family time. 
you've got the uh, Arizona football has brought in a bunch of kids in the last week and a half. Most of these are big lineman types, uh, project types that I think Arizona is going to just try to coach up. We've talked about it a ton. There's very few guys that you can get in those positions that can come in and play immediately. What do you think about getting the raw athletic uh, players to bring on both sides of the line? You know, this is what I always criticize Rich Rodriguez for. He brought in a lot of 5'8 projects, didn't bring in a lot of 6'8 projects. Um, you can't build your whole team like this. And with the, considering all the four stars they had come in the last two weekends, you'd like them to get one or two of those guys, and so far they haven't. But if you're going to take a risk, and, and for the most part, they've taken a risk on two positions, oh, offensive and defensive line and safety. And I don't mind them bringing in these big athletic offensive and defensive linemen. Uh, then now they have to develop and you have to still bring in some guys who can play immediately. But if you're filling out your recruiting class with these guys, I don't mind. But I got to see them land a few of these big four and high three star guys that they brought in the last couple of weeks, because right now those are not the guys they're landing. Right, exactly. All right, Brad, I'm going to let you sign off here. Can't thank you enough again for hopping in there during family time. It means a ton to me, man. You have a good time out there. Yeah, we're right about to start up the engines here, so it wasn't going to work much longer anyways. Uh, thanks for having me on, and uh, if you talk to Scott, tell him his state is beautiful. All right, you got it, my man. That's William Brad Alice right there. All right, big thanks to big thanks to Brad for hopping on right there. That means a ton. All right, um, basically, I agree with him. You'd like to see the football stars get a little bit higher than they are right now. But at the same time, Jed Fish has said from day one that that is going to be his recruiting uh, priority is he's going to get the guys that he wants and it's not going to be for a lack of effort. So Jed Fish is certainly uh, well within his rights there. All right. Big week coming up. We've got a bunch of recruiting news that we're going to get to the rest of the week here. I'm going to be up in Phoenix. Jason Shear is going to be up in Phoenix. We're going to be looking at all the guys that are on the U of A's list. As a matter of fact, tomorrow I'm going to break down some of them for you. Guys to keep an eye out, but if you can, check it out. The tournament's going to be in Glendale. It's going to be a ton of fun. And as always, DraftKings Sportsbook app, code word PHNX. You put in five bucks. Get $150 in free plays during these NBA finals. Hop on right now. There could only be one game left. Again, 21 and up, Arizona only. You got a gambling problem, call 1 800 next step. They'll get you all taken care of. I like the Warriors, If you, although the Celtics are pretty good when it comes to uh, avenging their losses, especially at home. So you might want to look at that as well. But the one place that you want to go for everything is the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Again, code word PHNX. All right. We're going to be talking now about a bunch of recruiting tomorrow. We're going to get to everything that you need. Um, there's a list of about 15 players to keep an eye on, and I'll be back with you tomorrow breaking that all down. Thanks so much. You've been listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast.